guys, welcome to my temporary animal room. It is quite crowded in here. <laughs> the eventual goal is to build a barn on the property in the near future and have like 2,000 square feet of just like animal space and enclosures. I'm very excited for that. Anyways, until then, it will be on sitting on a door behind me and other random things. So I'll probably give you guys a nice tour once the barn is built or maybe before then. It's just not super impressive in here. It's kind of like messy like this. I've got this on sawhorses. <laughs> um, okay, so today's video is all about dubia roaches. Now, I didn't always breed dubia roaches. I used to purchase them and then I decided a long time ago to start, I shouldn't say a long time ago, a couple years ago, to start breeding them myself because they are such a great source of protein and moisture for a bunch of different animals, even monkeys and stuff like that eat dubia roaches. They have, um, I wrote it down here so I would be accurate in my percentage because I knew I would forget, 23.4% um, protein. So there's very few insects that come near that and they're relatively easy to keep. And if you have a lot of different reptiles like I do that need different sizes of prey, it's also really awesome to have a dubia roach colony because I have baby nymphs that are small that my leopard geckos can eat or my crest gecko can eat. Um, but I also have larger ones that my tegu could eat if she would eat insects. <laughs> um, my bearded dragon can eat, my bullfrog can eat. So that's a really great positive of having your own dubia roach colony because you can't, you have a size for every animal that you possibly have. I mean, I even feed my dubia roaches to some of my uh, feeder anoles. They're, I call them that because I purchased them uh, because they were feeders and I gave them a second chance at life and now I just keep them as pets. But pretty much every animal that I have that eats insects, including my chameleons, um, I feed dubia roaches too. So it is a lot more affordable in my opinion to care for a dubia roach colony than purchasing them because they can get pretty pricey. I read some things on the internet about them being pretty affordable to buy, but they're really not. So, um, I mean, not in my experience anyway. Another thing about uh, having a dubia roach colony that really helped me out was during COVID. I mean, I know still COVID is still going on, but like in the beginning of COVID, um, really I couldn't get my hands on any, any dubia roaches. Like I needed to add more to my colony, but I had to make do with what I had. And thank, thankfully, like I was having success with my dubia roach colony to an extent. I definitely needed more to add to it, which is why I was looking for them. But when there, if something should happen like that, then, you know, you're totally prepared. You have a colony that you can feed off the adults if you need to. Hopefully you don't have to. Oh my gosh. One time I had a dubia roach colony and someone was house sitting for me while I was visiting some family in California and I came back and they had fed off my entire roach colony. I had no adults left. Um, now you can tell the difference between adult dubia roaches and non-adult dubia roaches by two things. The males have really nice long wings. They cannot fly, so don't worry. Um, and then the females are very, very shiny and they have these like little baby looking wings. Now, I don't know all there is to know about dubia roaches. So this video is gonna be basically me showing you how I set up my new um, cage for them because this one is due for a clean. And I'm gonna kind of go over like the, this, the things that you need to keep a successful dubia roach colony. Now, a lot of this will vary a little bit depend on, depending on like where you live, how humid it is, how hot it is. Um, so I'll kind of go over all of that as well. And another great thing about dubia roaches that I wanted to mention is that it really um, it simulates a good like hunting behavior. Like it gets like your reptiles in the hunting mood because if you flip dubias on their back, that's how I have to feed them to my uh, bullfrog because her aim is like so bad. But if you dip, it, flip them on their backs, usually they'll like flail around quite a bit or they play dead, whichever one. Uh, <laughs> when they flail around a bit, your reptile or amphibian is just like, oh, hell yeah, like, let me get on this. And it, it gets them into their hunting behavior, which is awesome. So female dubia roaches live to 20, around 24 months and then males live to about 18 months. So a little bit different there. The gestation period for a female is 65 days. And then after she, she basically will have an egg hanging out of her butt. I just, I just, oh, there's some uh, tomato hornworms under there. I left the lid off the other night 
and they were all over my freaking house. And I just found two more down there. Well, what a waste of money. Um, the female will pop this little egg out of her butt and um, the males will fertilize it or one male, I'm not really sure. And then she will um, pull it back inside her 65 days later, have the babies. And then as soon as she's had those ones, um, she can actually get pregnant again right away. With a Doobie Roach colony too, you want to have about one male to every five females. And currently I need some more females. And I'm going to actually leave you guys a few links of places I get all of my supplies. And then also the actual Doobie Roaches themselves. There are three different places that I purchased them from. So I'll leave those, I'll leave that for you guys below. I think one or two of them you can get $10 off if, if you use my code. So I'll leave all that for you and then you can decide what's best for you. And then another thing you wanna make sure before you start this Doobie Roach Colony is you want to make sure that you're like prepared if it grows rapidly and you end up with too many Doobie Roaches. Like I have, quite a few reptiles. So that pretty much will never happen. Um, but, and you also need to be prepared for the complete opposite of that. If you end up with too few and they're not breeding fast enough, you need to make sure you have other food on hand. Um, I always keep other food on hand just because I like to give my animals a variety. So I pretty much always have like butter worms, um, super worms, meal worms, wax worms, soldier fly larvae. Like just, I kind of just rotate all of that around. So keep that in mind. And before you buy your roaches, you want to have your colony area completely set up. And the rule of thumb is basically like one square foot to every 200 roaches. And if you start growing your um, colony pretty rapidly, you can actually have two bins and be breeding in two different bins. I've just removed all of my egg crate stuff and I put one back in there so that they can crawl in this, but this is about the time that I would clean this out, possibly a little sooner than this. However, here we are. <laughs> I also have all these little guys down here that are supposed to be eating some of the extra junk and whatnot, but it's not happening fast enough here. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump all of this out and we will begin building the enclosure and I can talk to you guys about everything that I do to breed my doobie roaches. I will also tell you guys that um, people do the, like breed roaches like a lot of different ways. There's no like right way I would say. I mean, there are some basics that you have to follow like temperature and humidity is kind of a non-negotiable and diet and stuff, but I mean, all of those can vary just slightly. It just depends what works for you. So this is by no means like the only way to have a roach colony. This video is me sharing how I have a successful Dubia roach colony. So let's go ahead and get started. Here is the bin that I keep my Dubia roaches in. I had my boyfriend Nick help me cut these guys out. And so one of the key things for roaches and any insects that you keep, those are like my crickets, I keep them totally open. No, they don't jump out. That's everyone's first question. Um, you wanna have a lot of ventilation for the roaches because you are keeping this at 40 to 60% humidity. You don't want it to be dark, hot, and with no ventilation because that is going to kill your Dubia roach colony pretty quickly with bacteria, mold, etc. So you wanna have good ventilation. I could probably even do it a little bit more than this. Um, I also chose a black bin because darkness is super important for roaches. Now I've seen online people say, oh, like they need a 12 hour light cycle. And then I've had other, heard other people say, you need to just leave them in a dark bin and let them be. That's how they breed the best. So I have just always used a dark bin and it has worked great for me. I just rinsed this bin out, which is why it is a little bit wet. And I'm gonna leave that there because I want to make sure that this stays at 40 to 60% humidity. And there are a few different ways that you can do that. I personally like having a larger water dish, which is right here. This is what I had in my last one, which is kind of like before I clean this out, which is why it's kind of gross. I like to use paper towels because I can just pull them out, throw them away and replace. 
You can use a lot of different things for water for roaches, but if you get a big enough water bowl, you're probably going to keep your humidity right where it needs to be. And you can also be giving your roaches water at the same time. A lot of people like to use water crystals. They're basically the ones that gardeners use and stuff. So you can buy like the miracle Grow water crystals on Amazon and I can link those for you. I do use those sometimes, um, but I've been finding this just easier lately. So I've been doing this. Hi, Leo. Now, if your humidity is too high, you can have a lot of issues like bacteria, etc. And if you have your humidity too low, your nymphs, which are the babies, can dry out. The egg capsules or whatever that come out of the females can also dry out. So you kind of want to keep it about 40 to 60, just ambient. And you want to avoid spiking the humidity a ton, like I avoid spraying down my enclosure because then the humidity goes way up and then I have mold issues, etc. So I like to just do it with a water dish. That's the best way to do it. And for heat, um, you can actually put your water dish on top of where your heat pad is. That will help keep the humidity up as well. So for this, I'm gonna switch this out. Take my little humidifier guy and spray this down. And I'll probably replace this like every few days. Another reason why you want to keep the humidity right too is because your roaches need to molt and grow and they can't really molt very well if it's too dry. I am currently not using a heat mat because it's so warm right now where I'm at. So I'm going to be just putting this in there as usual and then I will put my food over here and my egg crates over here. Now for heat mats and things like that, you're going to want to keep your temperatures around 70 to 80 degrees in here anything above 85 can cause like for like fertility to decrease and it'll cause stress for your roaches some people like to use lights for the heat for the roaches i don't like to do that because i i just think it dries out the enclosure just way too much so i personally like to put a heat mat and if it's on carpet i'll set it just right below so I'll do that in the winter and then I usually put the water right on top of where that heat mat is and it will keep the humidity up in here as well, but definitely keep an eye on your gauge. Another key to water is if I were to just fill this up with freestanding water, most likely I would wake up and a lot of my roaches would have drowned. So you wanna be able to, you wanna make sure that this isn't too slick where they can't climb up it. Um, you wanna make sure that it's not just freestanding water because they will actually drown. I personally don't like to use any substrate in my enclosures. I find it just way more difficult to find the babies and then the roaches in general. They burrow under there. It's very hard to clean. Um, I just keep it just like this. They don't really seem to have an issue with it. My roach colony is doing just fine. And I'll also link you guys where you can get your egg crates. That's my favorite thing to put in here. And they do kind of break down over time. Mine are over here. My roach colony is currently in here right now. So that's about how many I have. So we'll slowly start putting them back in here. And with your bin, you also want to make sure that you have very slick sides because roaches will climb. These guys don't fly, but they will climb up and out. So I always keep my lid on. If you don't want to keep a lid on, you can also smear Vaseline at the top of your enclosure that will prevent your roaches from crawling out. So we are going to slowly put these guys back in here. I like to lay these this way. You can do it this way whatever you feel comfortable with. I'm trying to do this slowly so I don't disturb them too much. All of this stuff right here, I think they call it frass. This is basically um, dubia roach poop. And the nymphs actually will eat this when they are born. They'll sometimes eat some of the adults' veggies and food as well, but it's okay to have a little bit of this in there. So I'm actually gonna dump all of these guys back in here and leave that frass because the babies will eat it. But there's also quite a bit of that left over on my egg crates. Also, my chameleon literally just fell off the side of his screen. I don't know why he's gotta climb and just fell into his little um bowl that grabs his water from his stripper he can't drown in it it's very shallow but what the heck for food so these were from before i cleaned out the enclosure this is what i had for them i'm going to be putting 
old fashioned oats. They get organic because they are super spoiled. I'm gonna put these here. You can also use a whole grain bread that they can eat. And then for the most part, you're gonna do a variety of vegetables and fruits for them. No, did did not for you. And so I cut these up a little earlier. I will change these out about every other day. And this obviously can stay a lot longer unless it gets too moist and moldy in there. So I'm gonna kind of set this up for them. Um, you're gonna wanna do your own research outside of this. Um, I'll link a few resources for you guys in the description box, but if you do too much protein for roaches, it can actually be toxic. And you just want to keep in mind that you're gut loading these guys and you are essentially feeding your reptiles what you're putting in here. So if you're putting rotting, disgusting, gross food in here, then that's essentially like what you're feeding your reptiles. Roaches aren't gonna magically eat disgusting food and then be super nutritious for your reptiles, in my opinion. So, um, you're gonna wanna, you can even keep like, I keep a bag in my fridge of like extra scraps and different things like that, like so that when I'm cleaning this out and giving them more food, I can basically go back to that and provide them with awesome food. Now, you're gonna wanna also do your own research because there are so many different ideas about what you should feed, what you shouldn't feed, what helps them breed faster. On quite a few uh, websites that I've read and even a site that sells roaches basically says like, one day we feed them potatoes, the next day we feed them sweet potatoes, the next day we do greens, the next day we do only bananas, the one day we do oranges, and then one day we don't do anything, no food at all. Um, so that works for them and they breed roaches. So I think that that's a great way to do it. The reason I don't do that is because that's just way too much effort. <laughs> I have all of these fruits and veggies that I keep for my other animals and my rabbits. So I have tons all the time, but I don't always have those specific things to keep that only this one day and only that the other. So I do like to feed a lot of oranges, although that's not the only thing that I feed. I'll definitely put a few slices on top and they will eat it so fast. It's like literally gone within like three hours. Supposedly oranges do help your colony breed faster and it, it, I don't know what it is about it. You'd have to read about it, but that's basically what I'll do. I wanted to pop this clip in here real quick while I'm talking about feeding because I went to the vet yesterday and everyone's fine, but I did go over kind of how I gut load my insects and everything. And the vet told me that he recommends this. This is the Missouri high cow cut or sorry, gut loading diet. And this was about $22, I think. So it's not the cheapest, but there's a lot in here. And he recommended providing this. Like if you're buying insects at the store to feed and you're just, you're not keeping them and like breeding them like I do with my roaches and stuff, you wanna do it within 48 hours before, um, you know, you, you feed them. But I'm gonna put this in all my enclosures. He told me that kind of like, the veggies and the oat and all that that I'm doing, even though that's what it says all over the internet to do, he said that that's just not quite enough calcium. And this will really, really, really make my insects super healthy um, and even healthier for my critters. So I just wanted to share this with you guys because I didn't know anything about this product before yesterday. So um, I think it's kind of hard to get, but you might be able to buy it online. I bought this at the vet office, so if you're in San Diego, I'll put the name of the vet in the description box because I can't remember it. It's like Pet Hospital Penusquitos or something like that. But they're really, really knowledgeable about reptiles, which is awesome. So just wanted to share this with you. So I'm going to continue doing the diet that I have been doing that I'm talking about in this video, but I'm also going to offer this as well. We'll put this in there as well. And I try to keep the food off of the... A heat mat if I'm using one because it will cause it to rot faster. So this is a good idea of what you know a good setup looks like. Now every square foot like I said should house about 200 roaches and you know what I tried in the past? I tried keeping all of my nymphs and all my babies in a completely separate bin and then put only my adults in a bin and Honestly, I didn't notice it changing anything. One of the reasons why I did that, so I wasn't stressing them out when I came in here to be like, all right, who am I feeding off today? And then the adults would get all stressed out and run around for their lives. But I'm just very careful when I come in here and try not to disturb them too much, but to each their own. If that works for you, great. Now, if your colony starts to overgrow, then you can, I mean, that's great, good for you, you're doing something right, or many things right, you can start another bin. So I might actually do that because I've got quite a few roaches in here, and I, I have not counted, but I would guess that I'm, 
probably needing to give them all some more space pretty soon here. A lot of these are full of roaches, um, but my colony is doing really, really well. There's a lot of little babies in here, as you can see. So I absolutely love breeding these guys. And I'll check back in a little bit and show you guys what it looks like when they are all munching on all this. I like to catch them eating all the fresh stuff that I put in there. Um, so we will go ahead and put the top back on and check back in a little bit. Thanks for watching guys. Hopefully this was a useful video for you and I'd love to hear about your guys' Dubia Roach colonies. If you've ever had one, are you planning on starting one? Again, I've put all of the links that I can remember or talked about in this video in the description box, so check that out. I also linked a bunch of places you guys can buy feeders and roaches etc. Um, also, like I'm making some lists of like content I want to put on this channel. So if there's anything specific that you'd like to see, please let me know. There will be some good like cage build videos coming up because I'm pretty much upgrading almost everyone in this entire room as we go. And as I build, it takes me a little while to build out the enclosures because I like to do the backdrops and all the custom fun DIY stuff, but um, in between there, there will be some other fun DIY videos that I've already got up my sleeve. So hopefully you guys enjoy those and let me know if you guys have any ideas or anything that you'd like to see on the channel. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I have three of them and I will link all those below for you as well. Have an awesome day guys, an awesome Sunday. Enjoy your Sunday Bachelor in Paradise is starting soon if you watch that. If you don't, I don't either. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.